Here's a tip for all you people. I got the wrong fertilizer. I got uh, got in a hurry and I bought uh, 400 pounds of triple 13. Doesn't require 400 pounds of triple 13. It requires that much of 624.24. If you screw up on the onset, they'll come to back to bite you back here in the ass. So you ain't got it, the stage set right. Don't push it because you're planning a six-year uh, perennial anyhow, so you got time. No, don't get ahead of yourself. That's the first mistake to failure. I'm gonna go down at least six inches. Get some dirt down in there. We'll, we'll mix all this together. And there's still a little crust on this ground because it's been cold. The moisture content is still a little high to be trying to plant up here. Okay, on to the next one. Now up in here we're gonna be planting a six-year, five or six-year perennial with the Alpha Rec Plus. That's got chicory in it and uh, grazing alfalfa from Whitetail Institute. So uh, it's time to take this out of an annual because I noticed the annuals up here weren't doing quite as good, so you're gonna have to rotate it. And that's the one mistake a lot of you guys make. You get in, oh boy, it's really neat to go out and see this tall annuals. It's not gonna happen every year. You keep out annuals, pretty soon you'll have this tall annuals because it takes a lot of nitrogen and a lot of stuff out of the soil annuals going so not bad idea to rotate them okay we're down here on the killing Dillon pot and for the last two years that we established this we've had it uh, in uh, fall annuals and I want to switch this over to a perennial I mean to, yeah to a uh, Whitetail Institute clover uh, I'm gonna put this in clover and I'm gonna take that old clover one out this fall and plant a perennial back there. I mean an annual because it's going into the sixth year. You're getting a lot of grass in it out in the drought. They make this little tool here. They take soil samples and it's sort of a neat little tool. You just push it down in the ground, give it a twist, bring it up, tap it on your bucket. You got a little soil sample in there. Or you can do what I was doing with the spade works just the same so it don't get a whole lot but uh, this little brush comes with it so you can knock it out dump them out but uh, this is rather expensive for no more than it is so most guys probably just prefer to go with a spade so, uh, this pH was some of the best right here in this area on this entire property when I planted it two years ago. So I just want to check it and see if they need a little lime amendment. Because like I said, when you plant these perennials, you want to do it, definitely want to do it right on the front end. Because they're going to last five and six years. And you've seen the results. And this will take the place of that old plot that's over there because its longevity is on the decline. So uh, this will be a brand new whitetail clover plot and uh, should be ready hopefully by next fall if we can get it in this front. Ideally, if, if, you ha if I have my druthers, you, you can get a perennial planted a lot better in the fall because the ground temperature is up and the moisture is down so you don't have the compaction for that small seed. But that's why you go with an annual. Uh, because you can get it in the ground and it'll germinate fast. But a fall planting of a perennial, the soil conditions are a lot better and you have a bigger window. Whereas in the spring, you know, it starts raining down here. This is low ground and 
this could stay wet for quite a bit. That's why I'm planting clover down there. But for you guys that were in the frost seeding, ideally, if you had tilled this field up and left it uh, fallow during the fall with no, nothing on it, it wouldn't have no erosion because the snow would have covered it up. And you could have came out and frost seeded it with your clovers and as the temperatures warmed up, you'd got very little erosion off the snowfall and uh, you would have had pretty good success. But you'd have to do the tillage prior to it in the fall and just leave it fallow. But uh, I try to utilize it with that the fall annual on it and you had a lot of grazing pressure. And this was in uh, pure traction last year and you can see how cropped down it is. But we got our samples in there, it doesn't take a lot. But I showed you with the spade and I showed you with, with the actual soil sample uh, tool. So uh, let's get out of here. Yeah, once you got your samples in there, you, you want to do it in clean buckets too. Mix it all up. And unfortunately, I left my sample bags at home, but I got these bags here. They'll work just as good. You don't need a whole lot. Get it in your bucket. And you can see, the difference, that's about all you're going to need. Then we'll label them what field they were in. That's it from the non-typical. But uh, treat the soil. That's what feeds humanity. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Fellow food plot enthusiasts. You know, in the past, people probably, in some areas, probably have a hard time getting a soil sample tested. Now, you've seen how we've taken them from the field and uh, usually I send it to my ag uh, dealer here and they test it here in Nevada, Iowa and I can run it up and do whatever. But for you guys that don't have ac access to that, Whitetail Institute sells these laboratory testing kits for around $15, that's what this costs. But, and in that, you get your priority mailing envelope you get your bag uh, to put put it, uh, your soil in. Plus, you get the the proper paperwork to fill out what you're doing and what you're growing. And you put it all one soil sample in each envelope. And then you send it off to them, and you pay the postage. And they can email you back the results, or they'll get back as fast as they can with it. And it makes it pretty simple once they get it in their hands they can communicate back to you and recommend what amendments you need for the soil that you're planting. So, like I said, it's pretty self-explanatory to fill these out. Um, fill your soil up to that line. And this was our uh, going to be, this field here, we labeled it bottom field. And it's going to basically um, I'm planting that in whitetail clover, and so we'll fill that bag up to that mark. And if you can put, you know, don't, you know, put any much more in there than that because they're afraid it could get broken shipping, and that would be a dirty mess. We'll get it up to that line just a little bit more. So you can see we filled it up just about halfway, fold the clamps down, and then you take and secure it. And like I say, this is really easy to do, especially if you don't have in your area an agriculture laboratory to do that. And then all you have to do is put this submitted form your bag has the same information that this form has. You put it all in here and it's already got a self-addressed uh, envelope to Whitetail Institute. You put it all in there, seal it up, pay the postage on it. In a few days, you should get an email back from Whitetail Institute and uh, they can uh, address it that way. So it's pretty simple. And as simple as this is, 
this is probably the most vital step in a successful or failure of a food plot. Well, here it is, Thursday afternoon. Uh, we got the results back. Anyhow, uh, that's how fast you can get those results. We got rain coming in on Friday, Friday the 13th. This might give us a window to get it done. As you can see, that bottom field is really good. It's 6.4 right now. And the soil is pretty good the way it is. It, uh, so it's a half acre down there. So it looks like about 900 pounds of ag lime, but we can cut that down because we're going to use uh, Pell lime. And that's how fast you can get it. Uh, you can really get it, get your soil sample back really fast. Like I say, desired pH is 7, so we're not that far off, 6.4, so we can raise it up. It'll grow good clover. Here we are, Friday the 13th of all days. We got rain, we got snow, we got everything in the world coming in here. Remember, it's the 13th of April. We took this soil sample test down on this field that we're going to plant in Whitetail Institute Clover. We took it on the 8th. We got the results back yesterday, which have been on the 12th. And we got a 6.4 uh, right now, so we got to raise it 6 tenths. Uh, that'd be 40 pounds, 43 pounds of lime for every thousand square feet and so that's not a whole lot of lime for this field which I mean it'd be more than 43 pounds but it would be about a half acre so uh, uh, we, we've got 40 pound bags so we're going to go with 40 pound bags uh, and four thousand square feet so that would be basically uh, 20 bags would be right at that. Yeah, that'd be 20 bags. That'd be 800 pounds. So uh, uh, we're going to rock and roll on that. We're going to come in here with, uh, we need um, 0.3 pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet. We need uh, 1.4 phosphorus and 2.8 potassium or potash. Uh, everything looked pretty good. We were a little low on the potassium, uh, but most of them was medium. And like I say, 6.4. So we got to get going. I ain't got time to do a lot of talking. But this is so cool and so easy to do. I got four, $15 in the soil test kit. I had $7.30 per sample to mail in. Two samples was. Uh, 1460 so you got 1460 plus 30 you got uh, 30 14 40 44 less than $45 for your soil camp samples on two food plots so let's get going I don't know the sky looks pretty threatening this is what it looks like right now we're gonna disc this under chop it up some of it's clover, that one thick spot that you're seeing out here is already whitetail clover that I put in here. And the other is just some, oh, annual weeds. But we'll disc it out and get it done. And that's, oh, what time is it right now? I don't know, 655. So, Evu said food pots are easy and throw and grow. Uh, they must be smoking something that, uh, other than cigarettes because you've got to rock and roll. Tomorrow morning this will be saturated and it's low ground. So if we don't get it done now, spring, chances are you won't get back in there. So we're going to get the lime on uh, and get that spread on. Then we got to put the fertilizer on. So we got to disc it in. So let's get going.
You can see why I use that respirator. It gets pretty dusty down there. Now we're going to put the fertilizer on. Uh, we don't need much nitrogen, so we're putting on 624-24, uh, 100 pounds of that, and uh, 50 pounds of uh, triple 13. So that ought to get our, our phosphorus and our potassium up where we want it. Now we gotta run up, we'll get the disc and get back down here. We got my smaller disc, so it may take some a little bit longer. My other disc is on a job site. So we'll just have to make do with what we got. So we're gonna disc it up now. It's 8.21. So let's get this disc going down through here, see if we can get it chopped up. Hope it's not too wet. Not too wet, so it won't compact. So get it, get it disked up. As you can see behind me, we got this disc up, and we got the fertilizer and the lime incorporated. I want to make a statement. That plow that you're looking at right there was made by Athens Plow Company in Athens, Georgia. I have no idea how old that plow is, or disc, I, pardon me, I, it's Athens Plow Company out of Athens, Georgia. And that's what Trump is trying to talk about, making America great again. That plow, or disc, was made in the United States with United States steel with the United States labor force. I can call right now. That plow is probably I'm going to say 50 years old if it's a day. I want to show you something. Couldn't read that. Athens Athens Plow Company, uh, Plow Division. You call those serial numbers in. I guarantee you they can find a part for it. Made in America. Make steel. We don't need to import it from China. We don't need to import our tillage equipment. That Ford tractor. American Icon equipment right there. Made in America. It's uh, like I said, that disc is at least 50 years old. I know I've had it for 40. So, uh, and like I said, I can call down there at Athens Plow Division and they can bring the parts right to me. Try to do that with some of this off-brand overseas crap made with junk. It's uh, they're nuts in the front. Okay, you can see we got the field killed up. We're going to run up and listen to the weather forecast and see what that's got in store for us. A strong storm system will move across the upper Midwest today. The storm system will bring strong thunderstorms to much of the region and our first real chance at some severe storms this season. Large hail, damaging wind and a few tornadoes are all possible this afternoon and evening. As the storm exits the area Saturday, colder air will spill in behind it, along with strong winds. Heavy snowfall is expected across northern and western parts of the region where blizzard warnings and winter storm watches have been posted. Further south, the rain will change to snow Saturday night before ending on Sunday. Oh, if that weather forecast you just heard, that's why you got to move, and you got to move now. Because that's bottom ground, and if it gets wet down there, it can stay wet a long time. Now that we got that dissed it up, we got to seal it off a little bit. That's what the pulverizer will do. It's way too cloudy. You can't put clover in this. This is why we're going to run the pulverizer over it. Get it down to a uniform texture. So, once we do that, we probably, once we seal this ground off, we crank the seed on.
I've had it pulverized. It feels pretty uniform. It's a little damp. So I think I'm just going to let it get rained in because it was right at the verge of being too wet but just marginable and it's only going to get wetter. So I'll get the cranking this on. Make sure you put that seat on real light the first time. And the nice thing about Whitetail Institute, we're down here in the, in the field away from humanity. One, eight, zero, zero. We're going to press three for information. Got John. This is Don Mealy, the non typical Norwalkian up here in Iowa. Well, that was John, the customer service. He advised me. As I probably was going to do anyway, because there's a little moisture in there, and I don't want to pack it down and make it hard pan. I'm going to let that 100% rain and possibly snow settle it down into the ground. But keep that in mind when you're ordering seed. We're out here, as you can see, in the middle of nowhere, and with the 1-800 number, you can get professional help to help you along in need. I got three pounds. That's enough chicory to do an acre. So I'm going to put on just a little bit of it so basically it be the blend of fusion you know with uh, the three old white tail chick magnet in there chicory going along with that clover so it's not going to hurt and so uh, I'll just spread some of that on uh, like I say it's about a half acre down here so we'll get that spread on real quick now remember this is your chick magnet and this is your uh, Whitetail Institute Clover Advantage and Insight a blend So that seed is really really small It goes a long ways, but you want to make sure you don't get it very It all has to do is make soil the seed contact you bury it It ain't got enough muscle to come up out of there. Like I said, this is your chicory. This is your uh, Whitetail Institute with the rain bound coating on it, which will basically double the amount of moisture if you're in a dry period but uh, these go basically on top of the soil with very little dirt on top of them and like I said uh, when we talked to Whitetail Institute we can get away with just letting it rain in now if it wasn't going to rain you'd want to cover it up to keep the birds and stuff but all you'd really do is just color pack it so let's get this chicory uh, uh, on when you're putting this these seeds on you got to put them on the lightest setting of your cedar and a lot of these people go with these ten thousand dollar drills and all that that's way too much money for a food plot because once you're done with that it goes sits under the oak tree i'd rather have ten thousand dollars sitting in the bank there it is right at eleven o'clock so bottom field planted all we're going to do now is put the rain gauge out that uh, like i said when you're planting food plots your best ally is scheduling and getting on it when you can. There it is, right there. Friday the 13th, April 2018. Now we're up here on the purgatory plot. You can see in the back, we had this in four jokes last year. And we're going to put a uh, perennial in here. And I'll tell you why. Because I'm getting tired of having to run up here and do these. ASAP, I don't get that leisurely sunny day where you got nothing on your mind but food plots. So we're gonna put alpha rack in there, it's high ground. We got the soil test back. We're gonna get our lime on, get the rocking and roll. So it's important to get that bottom plot done because it's got, you gotta cross the creek that's low ground and it's gonna be wet. This should work up really good up here, it's up on top. And so it looks like I'm getting some breaks in the clouds up here. We might have a little sun. It's not supposed to rain for a few hours, maybe four o'clock, five o'clock. So we got a rock, we got a wall. We're up here on the top field now, and we got a 6.1, so we, we added the lime amendment to bring that up. And which would have been 72 pounds per thousand square foot. Uh, the phosphorus, the potassium up here is really low. Uh, 
very low. I don't know why we've been feeding it, but everything else was medium. The potassium, you would have to have 180 pounds per acre. So we went with the 624.24. Uh, they recommend uh, that that's 24% phosphorus and 24% potassium. Then we threw a couple bags of triple 13 in because the nitrogen wasn't all that bad. We only needed 15 pounds of nitrogen um, per acre. So uh, we threw in some triple 15 in there. That'll help raise that nitrogen up. And uh, like I said, uh, we needed 94 pounds per acre of phosphorus and um, 180 pounds an acre for uh, the potash. That's really nice. Like I said, I took those soil samples. You seen me take them up here the other day, Sunday. Here it is Friday. We got them back in our hands and we're rocking and rolling. Running out of time. It's a one ten. Gotta get that stiff fit in. Well we got it disked up. That as you can see the sun went back under the cloud. It's way too muddy. Dry enough, you can't hardly make a ribbon with it, but there you go. You can do that with your soil. It's too wet. It's called a ribbon test. And that's way too wet. And like I say, it clouded back over. It was hot. That's why I put a short sleeve shirt on. And you can see as white as I am. I ain't been out in the sun because there ain't been no sun. And with those leaves, they are organic matter. Chop them up in there. But the problem with them is, where I was at where it was really intense, leaf uh, foliage drop, it, was, it did the trick. It held the moisture under there. So I'm just going to have to make the call of not seeding today. It's just not working up right, and you have you're going to have that problem down in, down on the bottom. We were lucky; we got it down. Didn't have any um, uh, leaf foliage on it, so it dried out quicker. But up here on top, uh, back over in the back, was a lot, a lot of leaves. That's one thing about doing a, a food plot: you've got to be very discretionary on your actions. Because if you go forward and it doesn't germinate, you got nobody to blame but yourself. Well, that's it for Friday the 13th, 2018. April 15th. <laughs> Down there at the farm. Got about two inches of snow down there. Never seen this in 68 years. Been a lot of deer that have walked down this trail this morning. I don't know if we can see that, but it's 9.45, 9.45, Sunday, April 15th. And 48 hours ago, we were down here on this food plot. Uh, fortunately, we got that put in prior to this rain and snow. We'll venture over here and see what the rain gauge has in it. We had a half inch of rain on this plot since Friday morning, 48 hours ago. Now, I hope you understand the importance of getting it done when you can in those small windows of opportunity. Last Sunday morning we were down here taking soil samples of this field. We got them mailed in on Monday. We got the results back on Thursday and we got the field planted on Friday. And here it is Sunday morning. Oh, food plotting. <laughs> it's a challenge.